right, man, let's talk about the Tobias Harris signing. <clears throat> a lot of people are making a lot of hoopla. It was underwhelming. He wasn't that good. I don't think the signing was that bad, to be honest. I, I actually kind of like it. Now, would I have them when I, rather them uh, went out there and got Laurie Marketing or should they have paid Miles Bridges? <clears throat> they still could get Miles Bridges. I mean, Bridges could play the three or the four. So, in reality, you know, he could play the three. He could play the four. Same with Tobias. He could play the three. He could play the, the four. is just a new extension of the three. You know, you might have to be a little bit thicker or stronger to play the four because you might have a matchup you have to, you know, body up against. But for the most part, it's the same thing, you know. And um, But I, I think he's exactly what they was missing. Now, when you, think, when you take something out of context or you take – one variable and put it in a different equation, you might get a different result. Excuse me. And what I mean by that is, um, you put Tobias, try to Detroit Pistons on playlist, by the way. You put Tobias Harris in Philadelphia, right? Let's put him in Philly. They got championship expectations, right? You know, he have a bad playoff game. He didn't do nothing. Guess what? In Detroit, that won't be, it won't be any expectations. <laughs> you know, expectations is to win, what, 20 games? So he's in a different situation than Aaron where, you know, he doesn't have to live up to an expectation. Now, he could be, you know, uh, auditioning for a new team by the trade deadline, honestly, you know, you know, or by next year minimum or next year's trade or the season after next year's trade deadline or this trade deadline. Um, his contract is very friendly. Um, you know, it could be an expiring contract next season. Um, he's a veteran that can help guys out, can defend. And I don't think people talk about his ability to defend. That that was the big thing. Isaiah Stewart was just too thick, too heavy footed to defend on the outside. He can defend and move his feet. He can stretch the floor. He can post up, you know, and also some of the things he brings to the locker room as far as, um, a good dude. He's a really good dude from what I hear, man. And high character guy. You know, he going to hit shots, you know, and he basically going to do what Jeremy Grant was supposed to do. And that was defend, shoot and defend it. And Jeremy Grant came here and he showed his ability to be able to flourish as a scorer. And that's fine. You know, you know, you only live once. YOLO, right? So I think the signing was good in my opinion. And I might be in the minority just for the simple fact of what he going to bring to the locker room. And you move one variable from a championship situation to another variable in a situation where there's no expectations. He played well in Detroit. He played very, very well in Detroit. Now, in Philly, I don't understand why he didn't make his shots. But then again, let's talk about it. You know, Tyrese Maxey is the only consistent playoff performer Philly didn't have. Tell me I'm wrong. Ben Simmons was trash. James Harden was trash. Joel Embiid has been trash in the playoffs. And you know, a lot of a lot of his issues got to do with conditioning. Jokic had the conditioning issues in his career. He lost weight, got in shape. Now Joel Embiid. You know, Tyrese Maxey's been the most consistent playoff performer they didn't had. And this one little run, you know, it's cut. You know, was one run as the man. For the most part, they've been up and down with everybody. Maybe not named Jimmy Butler, but they've been up and down with everybody. So going to get playoff P. You know, playoff PU. I like Paul George for real. He's been a terrible playoff performer and injury prone. So, you know, kind of when you kind of add it up and all that type of stuff, man, it's to me, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. But, um, but, um, but nonetheless, uh, But nonetheless, man, I, I, I like the signing, bro, honestly. Uh, good for the young guys. Stretch the floor. A guy that don't need the ball. A guy that can defend his position. Um, really, you just, you know, who's going to be the successor? That's the next question. Who's going to be a successor? You know, who are you going to drill up in a couple years or, or coach up to play that that play that spot? And could Rod Hollins be the four of the future? That's a great question. Uh, what is he? I don't know. Six seven, six eight, six nine. You know, if he closer to the six nine variety, he would just have to shoot the ball, and that's gonna have to be a requirement anyway. So, 
really, in reality, if Ron Hollins is 6'9", and he can get stronger and shoot the ball, in reality, he could play the four. You hope that a short Thompson, he developed, continue, he already strong. His ability to handle the ball and pass the ball, he and defend, shoot. Really, a lot of this shit really depend on shooting for the Pistons, to be honest. How they going to turn it around? It's a lot of other different things, forming an identity, an offensive system, um, defensively buckling down. and you know, But really, he got a nice truck, too. It's a real nice truck. I remember I used to work at a truck stop years ago. And the truck driver was so nice. He was showing love and stuff, buying me and my girl dinners and stuff. They was really nice. And give me gift cards for dinners and stuff, man. I remember, re you know, I was supposed to check their trucks and whatever. And I checked their trucks. I wasn't anal on them. They weren't supposed to have this. I remember I checked the truck back in one guy's truck. It's a nice truck. He had, I don't know if it was his wife or he picked up a little skeezer at the truck stop or what they call them, the lot lizards. Well, she was in the back naked. I just peeked in there and was like, okay, you good, go. She was looking all shocked and shit. Like, I was like, man... She was fine, too. I don't know if she was, like, uh, Middle Eastern, Chaldean, whatever. She was fine in the motherfucker. I'm like, shit. If you're going to pay for some ass, unless that's his wife, you're going to pay for that some ass, you pay for it. <laughs> yeah, she was cold-blooded, but... I peeked in her like, hang on, man. I ain't tripping on that. And hey, you want something from the store? You want something from McDonald's or something, man? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, it was funny, man. But he, he had a nice truck, and his truck was hard. I think the truck I was talking about... But the girl in the back, he had a hardwood basketball court floor in his truck. Man, nice. I used to love when they had dogs and animals and stuff. But nonetheless, um, yeah, when you start looking at it, man, I, I like it. This is what it boils down to is, you know, offensively, can they be fixed as far as the system? Defensively, they go defend and can they form an identity? A lot of the issues just come down to shooting, bro. That's everybody's problem. You know, with Troy, Troy did a great job. People say they don't have talent. They got talent. It's just that talent wasn't being put in a position to win. You can't have one guy dominating the ball and four guys standing at the perimeter or three standing at the perimeter, one pan in the paint, in the paint and you're not putting Doran in pick and roll situations consistently. And for the three guys on the perimeter can't shoot. So we're not going to just sit them on the perimeter. If we're going to pick and roll, we're going to have somebody slashing off the baseline like Gerald Wallace. Instead of Ivy just watching K, you know, you know, having the ball, how about you come, you know, come on the old Bobby Knight little cut from the wing and have them catch and shoot and, and, and attack off the dribble, you know, off the pass and attack the rim. They don't do a lot. No motion, no cuts. None of that coaching. Coaching really hurt them. And also, another thing that hurt them was giving the giving the team to Kay Cunningham prematurely. He didn't do anything to earn the team. I'm, I'm big on that. You know, you know, a lot of people we let in our life, we don't test them. We just give them access to, to loyalty access to trust we figure since we cool and i got to know you i trust you i you know we good we locked in i love you i want to marry you but you ain't never battle tested the people that's in your life and unfortunately when you don't battle test people you don't quiz people when the real test comes a lot of times that's the difference between life and death for a lot of people yep that's the difference between life and death but hey it is what it is um that's why you gotta battle test people but hey Hit the link tree, find me on X, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, what is this? Spotify and Anchor, excuse me. Shout out to Detroit Pistons Talk Playlist, peace.